Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's doing good and in this week's video I'll show you lot how I made some piping pipe. Now let's get it started. I started off by tacking together my first two one inch welds. When working with pipe this small it's important to make sure that your alignment's perfect. If the pipe's misaligned it makes a hard welding job even harder. But on the other hand, because the pipe's so small, it's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to the levels of the pipe. Once the two pieces are tacked up, I moved over to welding them on my captain's wheel. I used a submergic root setting at 80 amps, but even at such a low amplitude of 80, you can still blow through. So you want to make sure you're constantly turning the pipe and not standing still at any point because you will blow through. And when you blow through on pipes this small, you restrict the water away too much. So what I like to do is brace myself. I get myself in a comfortable position. I tuck my elbow in so the torque doesn't move too much. And then I can test how much free range I've got of movement before I start welding. And then I just keep it in the pipe. I tap it out around the same distance, somewhere between 85 to 90 amps. And it's similar to rooting where I brace myself. But it's a little bit different because once you start tapping, you're not too sure how the cap will come out. So you may have to adjust your position. Especially these ones here. This was my uh, first or second weld that I did. I wasn't too sure if my amp was too high or my positioning was off. Because if your position is off, you'll start tapping. And the next thing you know, the whole weld drips through. Because you didn't notice how much heat you were transferring into the cap. Either by moving too slow or being in the wrong position. The first root and cap you saw in the video was my second root and cap I did while making the pipe. It's just I didn't want to show you the arc shot because you really wouldn't know what you're seeing. But in this arc shot, this was the first time doing a one inch pipe in a long time. So my hand was a bit jerky, shaking all over the place. But because this was the past two jobs, I had no issues worrying about how much my hands were shaking. Because I knew the world would be more than strong enough with no issues. But that just goes to show how much you have to be on it while welding such a small pipe. That's why your positioning is so important. Once it was all welded up, I could move on to tacking it together on the table. It wasn't too hard, I just lined it up with the gap I wanted, put my first tack on it and used a square for my second tack. And because the pipe is so small, all you have to do is split the difference of the pipe and then you can put your final two tacks on it. I used my table square, which is just two scrap bits of channel and box section to hold the pipe up level. Then I used one of my smaller levels to put the elbow on. A good little life hack, when your stabila level isn't level anymore, from either a drop damage or you've left it on something hot for too long and then the bubble's gone a bit out of whack. Whichever one of the bubbles aren't damaged, you can chop it up and then use it like the little level I'm using here. You can see by these welds it's a bit more smoother because by now I'm a bit more used to it. So it's an 80 amp synergic root and an 85 to 90 amp cap. I'm making sure that I'm constantly moving so it doesn't blow through. Once that's done, I put it to the side and I move on to tacking together my other pieces. Usually when you make pipe in pipe, you have to weld the inside pipe and the outside pipe together. You can see that in one of my previous videos, but for some reason, I was able to weld the one inch pipe completely before putting the sleeve on. All I had to do was keep on testing to make sure I was assembling it in the right order. So I was sliding elbows on and the pieces of pipe, making sure I didn't get ahead of myself and have to cut off a tack because I forgot to put a sliver of pipe in or slide an elbow on first. You can see my prep here. On all my pipes, I have one side um, fitting prep and the other side a straight cut and I tack it together and then use the nine inch grinder usually, in this case here, the five inch grinder to cut the tack back as well as prep the other side of the pipe. Now that saves me so much time. And the tacks are feathered down right to nothing so I can go over them easily. 
and on such a small pipe they burn away to nothing because they're not holding any weight so you can feather them right away when I'm rooting my positioning does look low but because it's such a small diameter pipe the molten pool solidifies at 12 o'clock so you have to be in that position there in order to root it because any higher you will just blow straight through or you'd have to turn the amps down so much that I wouldn't be comfortable rooting at such a low power. Once that's welded, I could start tacking together some of the three inch pieces. I'll weld it now so I don't have to weld it later on when it's a completed pipe. That's one less weld to do with a whole bunch of weight and awkwardness on the pipe later on as well as one less weld to pull. Because the pipe's thicker I can root it at a higher power so I do it at 125 amps synergic and then I cap it at 165 amps. Once that's done, I put it to the side and I can work on putting a socket on the sleeve. The purpose of this socket is to be a drain to capture any leaks that come out of this piping pipe system. Once I burn the hole, I clean it off with my linisher so I don't weld over any slag. Then I use my file that's been snapped with a hammer so it leaves a sharp edge so I can clean the inside of the pipe to get rid of any of the burrs. You clean the burrs off so it doesn't affect the flow rate. Then I grab a 3 to 2 inch reducer to mark on a piece of steel that I'm going to cut at. I need to use this as a cap to plug off the end. Before doing the final weld, I lay everything out on the table just to double check to make sure everything fits. And then now I'm going to tack it together. I'm using a bunch of shims and spacers to level everything off, ready for the final tack. I couldn't level it the second orientation because it's not level and I couldn't put it in the vise. So I tack a piece of scrap metal to hold it up. That way there I know it's all level and I can put the final two tacks on and then weld it up. I rooted it in quarters just because it's the final piece and I didn't want it to pull too much even though inevitably it's going to pull because it's such a small pipe but capping it was difficult you can see my position and I had to stand there and dodge both ends of the pipe but it came out alright
Now all the one inch pipes welded, I can move over to my vise and tack the sleeve on together. Usually I'd make pipes on my table, but because this has got a reducer, I had to take it to the vise. And in this orientation here, I'm just making sure everything is level, ready to be flipped 90 degrees and leveling it off the other way. Now it's flipped I can level off the elbow and the piece of pipe that's trapped by a device that's what I'm going by and I'm matching up all the rest of the orientations of that. The piece of plate that I burnt earlier is the cap that goes on here. So I'm just using my die grinder to clean off the paint because I weren't too sure where it was going to. And then now I can just tack it off as a cap. I'm, I'm holding the other side of the one inch pipe with my hand while leveling it off. Now I can hang the only flange. I use a chalk mark to mark how far the flange has to stick out. I put a tack on it, making sure the bolt holes are level and I've pull it out and then make sure the face of the flange is level and then I flip the whole pipe 90 degrees and level it off in the other orientation and all what's left is to weld up all of the butt welds. It wasn't easy doing the final welds now because everything was just in your way. That's why I done the 3 inch um, butt weld earlier. That's one less weld I have to do now. But all in all, it was a fun little job to do. I like doing pipe in pipe. It's a bit of a challenge because Usually what I do every day gets a bit boring So I like to test my skills and I thought it's an interesting video that I can show you guys. So I hope you like enjoy it With that being said the video is wrapping up So I hope you lot enjoyed what you saw and if you don't want to wait until every Friday for a new video Follow my um, Instagram and then you'll be able to directly message me and keep up to date with all the pipes that I'm doing day to day because there's a lot more content that I put up on my Instagram that I don't show on my YouTube. Join me in the next video. Thanks for watching. Yeah.